Opening tip, starting lineups, brought to you by Nationwide, is PCU very experienced. 4-1 record, they'll go with Weber, Johnson, Burgess, Graham, and Mo Alley cox up front for PCU and for Old Dominion. Also, 4-1, Baycoat, Baker, we touched on Freeman in the outset, Ross and Arledge, but John, PCU very the ball. They know how to recover if you beat their press and get into their half-court defense. So you have to be very aggressive attacking it if, in fact, you can beat it across the half-court. All set to go, Old Dominion home whites. VCU and their road blacks. 90th time. These two programs have met. Conference USA now the A-10. And Allie Cox wins a tip and we're off and running from the 10. Of course, the reason that Old Dominion left the CAA was for football, and their football team is playing this afternoon in Florida Atlantic. They wanted to be in a football conference and, uh, that was Division I A FTS, and that's why they're in Conference USA. Now. Shot clock strangely at 15 for VCU, and we got a, a whistle and a turnover on the first possession, traveling violation. I think they didn't know how to handle the ball for more than 20 <laughs> seconds in their half court offense, but good defense there by ODU starting out the game. And, here is this pressure there you go, right, right away. Mm -hmm. They Notice, go full court. And they don't guard the inbounders, so they've got an extra man back. There's Freeman. Plays 36 minutes a game. Top score at 19 per under pressure. They break it. Gets it off to Ross. Now to Arledge, and they'll reset. Good recognition of the trap on the first possession there by Freeman. He's going to have to work very hard physically and mentally all day. Baker now Freeman. Shot clock's at 10. Look at entry. Good ball fake. Nice bounce pass. Took that straight up. Did hesitated. Now quadruple team and it's taken away. Four guys around you putting it on the floor is not the right play. Johnson coming up in the air. Graham triple. Good. And that, sorry, Frank. That's what makes Graham so tough that he can hit that three, but he can also post you down low if he wants to. Grand average is 14 again. They break the press the other way. Blocked out of bounds. Stays ODU basketball. VCU has its pressure working. It's really 94 feet. They will double you at any point on the court. It's not just off an inbound pass. Three minute trigger. In trouble. And finally gets it to Ross. Who's in a double team. Almost threw it away. Gets it out top to Ross. Shot clock at 18. Freeman can hit that shot. Oh, nice tip in from Arledge. I was close. I was being <laughs> offensive goaltending, but his hand was just outside the cylinder. Arledge, of course, a transfer from George Mason. Senior averages six a game. Graham would just hit that triple. Jordan Burgess. Ross on it tightly. Johnson on the cut. Graham got the step. Tough pull up. Jay rattles out. Monarchs the other way. Arledge looking. Finding Baker. Going one on one with Allie Cox. Notice Allie Cox at the top of the key there. 6 6. There's Freeman with that jumper. We got here about two hours before the tip, and Freeman was out there practicing that exact shot with the trainer. Practice makes perfect sometimes, right? You can always tell the shooters. They're the ones who are usually out early. Graham, another three. That one runs long. Old Dominion up early, 4-3. Nice screen from Ross. Nice screen from Ross if they're playing football. Baker got the step. And the gentle roll and drops down. That Ross screen was so effective because he was able to move his man backwards. 6-3. Nice split. Johnson on the jump pass. Weber really hasn't touched it. Now he gets his... First look at the uh, leather. Shot clock's at 15. Oh, Graham's going to pull another three. And that one runs long, but Allie Cox with the offensive rebound. Almost sipped out of bounds. They'll reset it again. Good hands there by Freeman to almost break up that pass. Man to man look by Old Dominion. Good defense by the Monarchs. Stolen off the turnover. Bayco. Numbers. Triple. From Ross short and Weber with the rebound. And one thing we know already is the officials are going to let these guys play. This is going to be a physical basketball game. 
So that was Baker with the three. Did not go down. Weber the other way. Again, this is unfamiliar territory for DCU. You have to slow it down, and this is exactly what the Monarchs want. And they're doing a great job of converting on defense, getting back, even when they don't make a shot. There's a three, though, by Burgess. Goes down. Ties it up. So two threes by VCU, not at six. That's the way basketball is today. You've got to make threes to win basketball games. And, uh, VCU lost to Villanova earlier this week. It was because they couldn't make anything from outside. Baycoat, Baker, high screen from Ross. Got the step baseline. Tough move, good defense. Couldn't get it up through the double team. One on four. The kick out. Oh, Johnson from about 28 feet. That's no good. Graham trying to keep it alive. And it goes out of bounds. Good start to this one here at the 10. Early going. Six apiece. Rams and the Monarchs. And you play good defense it, mentally because you got to stay in your stance 25, 30 seconds and not relax. If you relax, you give up an easy shot. Pressure again, of course, that's what DC does. But ODU breaks the press. Using Ross as the release point there. Jeff Jones told me that Rick Ross is the best athlete, athlete he's yeah. ever been around. Really? And remember, he played with Ralph Sanders, <laughs> who was a freak athlete. Yeah. He played with Othell Wilson. He coached Corey Alexander. He coached uh, Brian Stiff, who's over the there bench, on his yeah. bench. He says this is the best pure athlete he's ever Freeman with four to shoot. Hesitation hanging in the air. Got his own rebound. Good save. Kept it alive, but he throws it right towards Shaka Smart. He was open. He was wide open. Unfortunately, out of bounds. And VCU possession. If he's Best athlete ever? That he's ever been wow. around. I said that to him. I said, really? I said, Jeff, I've known you since you played with Ralph Sampson. And you played with Othell Wilson. He said, I know. He said he's trying. What he is now is he, he was an athlete playing basketball. Now he's become an athlete who can really play the game. Turned over. Baco got the step. And there's Moses just checked in. Baco! Three ball! And he yells the crowd come on and they recognize that zone right away and found the open man in the corner nine six terry larrier's in there along with lewis dcu very, very talented freshman terry larrier oh great look with the left hand blocked by right. ross that's what jeff jones was talking about <laughs> great shot blocker averages about two a game right on cue made an out dribble freeman Hesitation got bumped by Larrier on the pass. Possession for the Monarchs. That's the first foul of the game, as I said. The officials letting him play. Very experienced crew here. Brian Kersey, Les Jones, and Chuck Jones. Uh, Kersey and, and uh, Les Jones work most of their games in the ACC. And if the name Kersey sounds familiar, that's his dad, Jess, who just retired at the age of 112, actually 74, from the NBA this past summer. Absolutely. New shot clock. Taylor's in there as well. Pulled the minute. His first touch. Crab dribbling is Palmore. Now we have two fouls. Yep. Another uh, block possession for Old Dominion. Shaka Smart says this team is still learning how to play defense the way he wants them to play. They, they're playing a little too much with their hands. They fouled a lot. Even in the Tennessee game when they had like a million turnovers against Tennessee, they also committed about a million fouls. Ross dribble drive, triple again. And Baycoat again knocks it down. Baycoat smiling at the fans over here as he runs back down court. This guy was a preseason all-conference selection showing why it was six early for the Monarchs' largest lead of the afternoon, 12-6. Shane of ODU. That Ross season a couple of years ago when he was a freshman, he was one of the few bright spots. Barrier triple. Runs long. Ali Cox, so offensive rebounding. The Rams will get another chance. Backup point guard Lewis and Jake Hunt Lewis in the game now. Very quick off the dribble. Oh, Johnson in and out for three. That's short. Runs up high. Who's got it? And we'll see who they say it's off of. Off of ODU. Possession for Virginia Commonwealth. Jaquan Lewis is from outside of Nashville. His AAU coach, Mark Miller, also had another job. He was the lead singer in Sawyer Brown. 
Sawyer Brown. Sawyer Brown. I remember Sawyer Brown. Yeah. And, and he, on the side, he was an AAU coach, and he coached, coached Jaquan Lewis. So that's an unusual AAU coach. Oh, that's awesome. Shot clock reset, Graham. Guarded tightly. Now off to Lewis, now back to Graham. Good defense by Old Dominion. We got to set it back up top for Weber. Jeff Jones's teams have always played very good half court defense, whether it's Virginia, American, or here. On the handoff, jumper, Lewis knocks it down. Shot son. 12 8, full court. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> On the lob in. Trying to handle the pressure. Got to get it over that 10 seconds. They do easily. Palmore's in there, guarded tightly by Weber, who. It's just a, uh, a thief out there on the court. In fact, the BCU averages 10 steals a game. Beautiful step through. Can't get the lay in to go. Allie Cox with the board. Rams a push. 10 steals a game and four of them by Weber. Which is ridiculous. Right, it's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Last year he averaged 3.6, led the, led the nation. This year he's over four. Early in the early going, as I said, he's got 313 career steals coming in uh, here today. The all-time NCAA record's 385. So at the rate he's going, he'll break it sometime yeah. early February. Foul was on uh, Old Dominion, so possession for VCU. Burgess will get it in back in there to Lewis. Weber, Palmo is on him. Under 12 to play first half. Down. Good defense and Funny walk. traveling yeah. violation. 11.44 left here before the break. Early going. Monarchs looking good. Thanks. Pointed out the tempo has been good if you're Old Dominion. They have not turned it over in the backcourt, given up any easy baskets. And they've shot the ball well the last couple of possessions. They're now up to 5 for 11 from the field after a slow start. Breaking the press well again for ODU. And if you're shot the smart, you look at the uh, time. It's 11 and a half left. You only have 8 points. That's not your pace. No. As you touched on. It's, exactly, it's not where you want to be. You would rather be about 18 right now. Mostly a 3 off the screen. That was a tough shot. Yeah. That was guarded. Live by the 3, die by the 3. That's college basketball these days. They're living right now, 15-8, third of the afternoon. Mostly redshirt sophomore. Had to sit out for academics to his freshman year two years ago. Jeff Jones said he was actually rusty because he couldn't practice that year when he started practicing last year. But from the start of the season to the end of the season, he was their most improved player last season. Graham stolen. Mosley, two on one, finds Baker. Layup is good. Largest lead of the afternoon. Old Dominion giving VCU some of its own poison there, and Shaka Smart wants an early timeout. Doing things, finding the guy behind him for the layup, Baker. Mosley hit that big three, and then a big steal. VCU off the timeout. Johnson, tough runner off the glass. Does not fall down. That was the shot Shaka Smart wanted out of that timeout, though. His leading scorer getting the ball to the basket. Johnson, zero so far, average about 17 a game for VCU. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he doesn't finish with zero. I'm going to go with I'm not going to take that back. Mosley again off the curl again. You know the old saying that they're feeling it? They are feeling it. That's four threes in a row. And the open layup off the steal. Mosley on his average with those two threes. He's got six. Largest lead at 12 right now. The, the, uh, the run is 14-2. Burgess stepped through. Allie Cox gathers. I think that was before he went up. They whistle a bump on Old Dominion. Baker, I think, gets whistled. It was before the shot. So they'll, they will inbound. Two fouls apiece. Given how the high intensity of the defense is here, Frank, only four fouls in, in a little more than 10 minutes. And that's nice to see in a college basketball era where we have games where there are 50, 60 fouls. Graham sizing up the three. Again, good defense. Staying in front of their man on the kickout. Burgess way off with that three. Ali Cox lost it off of his leg. 
It goes over to the Monarchs. VCU's just cold right now. They're, they're getting good shots. Shots at Shaka Smart. When he, they look at the film, Shaka Smart's not going to say bad shot. Last few yeah. possessions. But ODU's just making everything. And right now, VCU's colder than the weather. And the weather's pretty cold. Not terrible, but pretty it's a little chilly. <laughs> Double team, Freeman, they get it over. Another 10 to play first half. Williams in there guarding Freeman. Shaka Smart will have double figures players in this game for halftime. He does that every day. Every Again, Mosley. Somebody is feeling it. Johnny was running back before it went through the net. They're just, they're on fire. They can't miss. The only thing that's gone wrong is that he collided with Freeman going back down court and hit the court. This place is on fire right now. Mosley with three threes in his first half. Largest lead, 17 to run. Johnson. Burgess trying to quiet the crowd. Oh, what a tough lead. That was a nice move. And, and he was well guarded there. That wasn't any problem with the defense. Lays down to 13. Taylor on the screen. Bay coat off to Freeman. They'll reset it. Alex a ton of confidence right now. Arla Jock, top circle. Bay coat guarded tightly. Burgess on him. 10 to shoot. Got the step. Arledge. Oh, look out offensive. Oh, they got a blocking foul. That was fortunate. Wow. For Arledge. Brian Kersey. You want to jump the whistle there, but. Uh, Brian Kersey obviously felt there was a little bit of a dive involved uh, there. That's why he called him. Remember, he's, he's the son of an say, NBA yeah. ref. No, he knows better than I do, so. <laughs> it looked like Arledge had no idea what he was doing with it. Well, I don't think he did. Yeah, I, was I, I think you're right. I think he, he he got bailed out there a little bit. But Brian had a better angle than we did, that's for sure. And he's better ref than us. Like oh, you no said. question. There's another steal almost. Yes. There it is. BCU, the distance. Good defense. Ross stood his ground. And Old Dominion with possession. Well, that's the way the game's going so far. Graham makes a good play off the inbounds pass. Can't convert at the other end. And there's ODU to get the rebound. Joey Bondo sitting the screen as Jeff Jones going deep into his bench, really using a lot of his depth here this afternoon. Shot clock to 13. Again, that gets back to what we talked about before the game. That Jeff Jones knows that mentally this will be a difficult game, and he doesn't want his players wearing down either mentally or physically. Ross, floater, way short. And Graham comes away with it. 23-10. Old Dominion. Ross so far doing a great job on Graham. He hit that three early, but it's been quiet since. Burgess, right wing. High screen from Tillman. He just checked in. Gets it back off the roll. Look out! Wow. Ross with an incredible block. Monarchs possession, two on two. So maybe Jeff Jones knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Big coat and a blocking foul. Watch out. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. yeah. Burgess upset. A frustrated. Shaka Smart said, call the moving screen. Early going, 23 10, all Old Dominion. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before. Gotta score baskets in order to set up their press. And Shaka Smart clearly frustrated yep. that last time out. He's still over there talking to Les Jones about the last two foul calls. He can't running yeah. under the court and if he wasn't as respected a coach as he is right. that's the kind of kind of uh, move that a lot of coaches get teed up for yeah no t but brian kersey and les jones talked kind of talked him down a little bit i want seven to play ross mosley again can he do it again nope sure. well, they are human his first miss <laughs> he's got three threes we got a foul on the Monarchs' possession for DCU. And notice, Les Jones over there still talking to Shaka. I, I don't think they're making a dinner date for this week. I could be wrong. <laughs> but where, which way did the next foul call go after that? It went DCU's way. That's what good coaches do. And he's asking for the moving screens. That's what I see. Well, there have been a couple. There have been a couple. A well-coached team. The ball's going to stay with VCU. A well-coached team, Frank, almost always moves on its screens. Sure. That's because you, you, you've got to move almost a little bit to hold the screen. Nobody's, nobody moved on screens more than Bob Knight coached teams. 
because he coached them that way. And it, it's a subtlety that the officials frequently don't pick up if you're well coached. It's clearly out on Old Dominion. Shot clock at 20. Weber. Good defense again by Old Dominion. Guess who's in there will hoist the 15 footer. It's no good. It's been, dreaming with it. it's been one and done on almost every possession for BCU, which is a tribute to Old Dominion's rebound. Skip Mosley. That's one of the wickets. Good defense. BCU. Looking down low, can't find anything now. Back to Freeman. Tough jumper, way short. Was deflected, good defense. Good eyes. Hands by Weber. My eyes are Offensive foul. Oh! <laughs> you see that? He did the Spider Man. <laughs> Jumping up after taking that offensive foul. He's physically capable of it. So a turnover. See, there you see the deflected shot. Rebound pulled down by Old Dominion, uh, by BCU. Down the court they come here, and here's Weber going in the lane. That was close. That was close. Now remember, they've gone back to the old rule this year, though, where a defensive player it, it does not have to have established position right. before the guy leaves his feet. They yep. changed that rule a year ago and then went back to the old rule this year. So it's easier to take a charge now than it was a year ago. Under six to play. Right where Old Dominion wants it in terms of the uh, scoring. 23-10. Baker's pass knocked out of bounds by Brooks. As you can see, Shaka Smart, he's going to his bench, too, to look for some electricity, some juice. Absolutely. And he often, he always does go to his bench, but needs it even more today than normally. When was the last time they were under a point per minute at any point in the basketball game? Average almost 80 a game. Oh, good first step. Baycoat layup is good. The old shot fake. One of the most underrated things in basketball. He's perfect works. from the field. Four for four. They have a hold on him. Yeah, no question. That was a hand, a hand check. This matches the largest lead of the afternoon. 15 points. Shot clock's reset. It's a good tank game for both teams to play because it's so competitive and we're still in November. Oh, Graham, beautiful. Ball fake, floater, full court pressure. That's why he's hard to guard. And now they can set up their defense. Baco double team on the skip, finds Freeman. They break the press again. Experienced guards there with Baco, who's been a, a starter since he was a freshman. Freeman, as we said, is a transfer. He played all the time for two years at Campbell before he came here. Harlich, not a free the shot clock. is at 13. Harlich's going to try a triple in and out. Big fella stepping out, shooting that three. He's got a soft touch. He can make that shot, but it's not the shot Jeff Jones wants him taking. He wants him to, to be more inside. They've got enough perimeter shooters. He also thinks he's more aggressive when he plays inside than when he's on the perimeter. California kid tends to be a little laid back at times. Johnson. Two man game out top. Alley Cox is going to pull that triple way off the mark. And Ross goes high to get the rebound. You know Ross can go high. Yeah, great block earlier. Baker will swing it. Well, Baker was thinking about a three for a second. Way they've been shooting it, why not? Moving that screen. Was a moving screen. See? There it is. That's coaching. <laughs> Timeout. 356 left. Hold the minute on top. 25-12. What brought me to ODU? Jones' well, team's going back to his days in Virginia. It's the youngest coach ever. In the ACC, he was 29. Couldn't when he believe was that when I saw that. Yeah. 29. And Dean Smith was 30. Jeff was 29 when he first got the job. Out of the uh, turnover from Old Dominion, BCU trying to carve away before the break. Graham, he's got five points off to Lewis. Jumper is good. Brooke there to find the open guy. Notice the ODU defense shading towards Graham. Whenever he gets toward the lane, there were two guys ready to come help. He recognized it.
found Lewis for an open shot. Lewis has four. Applying pressure now. On power ball. 320 left and Lewis almost with the steal. And who's it out of? It's off Lewis. It is off of Lewis. Possession for Old Dominion, 19 to shoot. The opener against uh, when VCU played Tennessee up at Navy, uh, Lewis had to start because Briante Weber was suspended for a game, and he had one of the scariest concussions I've ever seen. Frank was right in front of me. Thanks. Good to see him back out there. Bayco continues to feel it. The three off the look from Arledge. Bayco, Bayco doesn't need you and me here. He's doing play by play on each of his shots. <laughs> he likes to talk to the crowd. Playing defense now. Shots like that, they'll happily have him talk to. Baco's got 13 points to lead all scores. Turned over by VCU. Good defense there. Again, quick hands. It's almost like, in some cases, these teams have reverse roles in this first half. Just for a second, it felt like VCU was waking up and getting sharp, and then right back comes Old Dominion with that three. They're too good and too experienced a team to not get their act together against anybody. Palmo off the Arledge. Shot clock under 10. Crab That's dribble. offensive. No, well, travel, offensive yeah. foul. Take your pick. Either way, the right team has the basketball. Yep. Arledge is not particularly good at putting the ball on the floor again. And that's why Jeff Jones would rather see him playing in the, in the post rather than on the perimeter. He can face up, but it's not his strength. Coming up on two to play. First half. 28-14. Graham. One dribble J. Good. You give him space, he's going to make the shot. And Jeff Jones calls a quick timeout here because he didn't like what he saw in that defensive set. Again, sometimes you got to remember the other team gives scholarships too. That's what Dean Smith used to say. And a letdown here these last two minutes and 11 seconds of the first half. He wants that lead in double digits at halftime because he knows he knows VCU's got to run it. Yeah. Now, do you tell your kids that, or you just try to keep? No, pushing? you just yeah. you, you you get on them and say. You don't okay, say. Hey, that we wasn't know they're going to make a run, right? No, never. Off the double, Palmore. Got to get it over, and they do. Ross, Bayco, 13 points in this first half. Three threes as well. Under two to play. Taylor. Nice Good fly. Yes. That's Ross's range right there. He can make that shot. Good execution out of the timeout. Pushes that lead back up to 14. Graham. Good defense. Taylor cutting off baseline. Double Ross. he traveled. Yeah. Good call. You know, you made the point about a, a good play out of a timeout. You are not going to see either one of these teams come out of a timeout unprepared because they're both so well coached. And it, it's like it's it's fun to watch the athletes. It's also fun to watch the chess match between between these two guys, who both have tremendous respect for one another. Off the uh, inbounds, ultimately really. Except for that, well, they keep possession, but they really have handled the press well when they've had to face it so far in this first that half. That was a rare time where, he, where they did. Baco dribbled into a trap, but they got away with it. They've done a good job of keeping the ball in the middle of the court, except when they find an open shooter. You don't want to pass into a corner if you can't, if you don't have to. Shot clock's at 23. Palmore picks up his dribble, a little scoop pass. Taylor. Tough block out of bounds. Alley Cox, can they save it? Yes, VCU, good hustle. Very good hustle there to keep that ball in bounds by Guest. And it's a play here, first half. Palmore did a great job there hedging off the screen. Alley Cox blocked again by Ross out of bounds. That's at least three for Ross. Jeff Jones said one of the reasons he's such a good shot blocker is because he can jump off either foot. Most guys can jump off both feet or off their stronger foot if they're right-handed or left-handed. He can jump off either foot, so it doesn't matter which way an offensive player is going. He can get to the ball and get up and block the shot. Ross takes a breather. 17 to shoot. Graham. Pull back. Jumper is good. That's a pro jump shot right there. He's got nine points. He's back to 12. Baco gets it off. This is trouble right here. Taylor finding Palmore. 
feathery floater, no good. Allie Cox with the board. They can hold for one if they want to. They do. Shaka Smart <laughs> screaming yeah. to get them to hold for one. If they score here and get it to nine or ten, they'll have to feel pretty good given yeah. the way Old Dominion shot the ball the first half. Hey, can you believe Graham had two Division One scholarship offers? That's it. Oh, that's it. Calling out the play. Oh. Weber blocked out of bounds again. Taylor weak side help. 6.6 left. VCU possession. See what they I would think they try to screen low and, and get Graham a shot here. Or use Graham to set somebody up, uh, up on a pick and roll. He gets the ball. Oh, they almost stolen. It. And it is stolen. They got time. Great find. Palmer Lamp at the horn. Sums up the first half. Yep, that's exactly right. Frustration on the Part of VCU, Shaka Smart, and the Rams trailing by 14 points. Great good. And now you see what I'm talking right, about. Right, right. It's, it's a, losses are tough to take, but they help you long term down the road because you get your players' attention. I just going to sign the brains of these two coaches. If you're Shaka Smart, what did you tell your team at the break? Well, what you told your team at the break is, look, fellas, they're not going to make threes like this all game. You know, nobody does that. They're going to miss a few shots. We have to keep our intensity up and still pressure the basketball on made baskets. And we also have to spread the ball out a little bit more. Beyonce Weber's hardly touched it on offense. No. Second leading score. Old Dominion possession on the first. Possession of the second half. Harlage. Ball fake. Oh, backdoor nice. cut. Maybe should have gone up right away. Oh, look out. As uh, Bake holding his wrist for a second. Yep, left wrist came down hard. Foul was on DC. Probably good news that it's not a shooting foul here, given the way Bake came down. Nice look there by Arledge as you called it, and then at the last second, Bayco decides to pass it. So it becomes a non-shooting foul, obviously. By the way, in the other locker room, I'm sure Jeff Jones was saying, look, the, the shooting stats are very pretty, but the reason we have this lead is our defense. And if we start to miss shots, we still have to win the game with our defense. Bayco on the kick. Freeman triple! There it is. They didn't cool off in the locker room, did they? Another three, seventh of the afternoon. First to the leading score. The 19 Prairie's got five. And the lead balloons up to 17. Largest of the afternoon. They've now made seven of their last nine threes. That often calls for an investigation of some kind. <laughs> Graham trying to answer. Going to go down. That's the thing. We're down by 17. There's no such thing as that 17-point play from VCU as they'll try to call. Into it, the Graham with that three doesn't go down. Well, that's a good point. That's what Shaka Smart has to remind his players. Oh, a travel and not a trip. And, and Weber got away with one there, I think. It looked like he reached in from behind. Again, those quick hands of, of Weber. There you see. That might have been the right call. Yeah. I think. I think though that he threw him off balance a little bit by reaching his hand in there. Weber's hand should be registered as dangerous weapon to the opponent. Graham. Trying to get the double figures, and he got, he got fouled down. by Ross. A little eager there. Yeah, Ross got there just a little bit too late. Did get his hand on the ball, but plowed into Graham. He had three blocks. He lost in that first half. Some, you know what I love about this game? Yeah. This will be the first free throw of the game. That's true. We didn't get close to seven fouls in the first half, and nobody got called for a shooting foul. They just played up and down. It was real basketball, which you love to see. I don't know about you, but it makes me crazy when games turn, turn into free throw shooting contests. Teams are in a double bonus with 11 minutes left and a half. Yeah. Graham will shoot two. Well, it's not going to teams where you can't make free throws either. I don't know if the uh, ODU students in the background are bothering him or not. My guess is he doesn't even know they're there. Good, good shooters, there. although he goes oh, got one the for general two. roll there at the shooters' roll. The best distraction I ever saw in my life in a game for free throw shooters was the Duke students decided to stop wow. waving their arms. That's a good call because it was an act by Burgess. Uh, tried to take take a charge and. Looked like a ballet dancer or something. But the Duke students decided to try something different. Instead of waving, waving their arms against North Carolina, they held up signs that said, please miss. <laughs> Just please miss. Please miss. 
sure they've done studies too. They also uh, chanted during that game instead of the usual profane chant. They chanted, "We beg to differ." <laughs> With officials, yeah, which I thought was pretty funny. Oh. Dean Smith did not. Double to get it away out of the trouble. They'll reset it. 16-point advantage for Old Dominion, trying to knock off in-state rival VCU. They've done a great job against those traps. Clearly well prepared the last three days in practice. Would have counted if it went. And uh, just like that, free throws the other way. Jeff Jones was telling me, because basketball teams have to practice on Thanksgiving. It's just a fact of life because the season has begun and you usually play, if not on Thanksgiving, a day or two afterwards. And so he practiced in the morning. He had his team practice in the morning, so everybody could go to Thanksgiving dinner. He said when he was playing at Virginia under Terry Holland, they would go out to Thanksgiving dinner as a team, and then a couple hours later Ooh. they would practice. Ooh. I was like, I can't walk uh, from here to the television set two hours after Thanksgiving dinner. It would be smarter to do it the other way. Well, that's, what, that's what Jeff was saying. He said he didn't quite understand what, what Terry Holland was doing there. But given Terry Holland's record, he knew what he was doing. Freeman was a very good free throw shooter. This is the first, and finals in the second. Back up to 17. That matches the largest. Freeman's got six. Quickly, VCU the other way, trying to pick up that pace. In half court. Lewis is in there with Weber. Trying to pick up the defense with Lewis in playing with Weber together. And now they can set it up with both those guards in the game. Weber knocks down the jumper. Comes the trap. Finds Baker. They get it over. 25 to shoot. They have known exactly where the outlet guy is on almost every possession against that trap. Arnold with a touch. There's Baycoat. Had those big 13 first half points. On the lob down. Ross goes up high and they get an undercut. Fouls on Lewis. Possession. World Dominion. It wasn't an intentional undercut, but intent doesn't matter. Unless Jones right there on the ball. So Freeman inbound. Shot clock reset. Fouls are already four to zero. Four to one, excuse me. BCU with the four. Remember, we had four fouls total the first ten minutes of the first half. Baker. They code another three. Got it again. Wow. It's like the basket's magnetized. Wow. Another three. 18-point lead. A couple of them have been well guarded, but a lot of them have been open shots because they've done such a good job with ball reversal and recognition of where the shooters are. Lewis against Baco, who's got 16. Weber, dribble drive. Graham, the answer. That one goes long. Yeah, Ross was out there with that long arm in Graham's face. Reset it. Yeah, you're up by 18. You don't need a quick trigger three there. And then wisely pulled it out. You don't want to change what you've been doing because it's been working. Freeman there, a little tough shot going left. He can shoot going either right or left, but he's better going to his right. In fact, they were playing Gardner Webb on Monday night, and the, the, the announcers kept talking about how he was a, such a right handed player. He's right handed, right handed. Game was on the line. Screen was set for him to the right. The defender hedged right. He went left, rose up, and switched the jumper to basically clinch the game. Jeff Jones said, I hope the scouting report says he's all right. Good move left. Johnson, that's going to be two shots coming up. Good ball fake. And then putting on the deck, going to the left hard. And Johnson, who's their leading scorer, is yet to really get going this afternoon. That's sometimes the way to do it, get to that free throw line. Sometimes that's when your shots aren't going. That's what you do. You just attack the rim You're not making your jump shots. You might as well just go into the teeth of the defense It's not normally what you want to do especially with a shot blocker like Ross in there Who had four in the first half? But if what you're doing isn't working you want to try something different Johnson has been cold all day he gets the line and makes the first Yeah, 0 for 4 from the field. He averages 17 a game. That was his first point of the game. Yeah, after almost 34, 24 minutes, excuse me. One more coming up, set up that press if he knocks it down. Burgess is going to check in. Graham will take a seat. Interesting that he has Graham and Weber both on the bench at the moment, trying to 
shake things up a little bit. The other thing about the press, too, they hope that it kind of fatigues you. Exactly, both physically and mentally. They'll get it over this time, but we'll see if that shakes out at all. In the last 15 minutes or so, we got a whistle away, I think, down on the block. Looks like they got Jonathan Williams. And he was trying to chase Baco, which has not been an easy task all day, and got a half step behind him and reached. So inbounds, baseline. Freeman. Moses just checking Arledge. Oh, that's his spot. That's and his spot. Exactly right. An easy deuce for the big fella. Jeff Jones will show him that on tape on Monday and say, that's where I want you. Look how, how easy it is. Lewis trying to answer. Alan Cox going up high. And another foul. We'll stay here. 1550 left. Old Dominion up by 18 over BCU. BCU five points in the second half. That's a little, a little better pace in the first half, but not anywhere close to where Shaka Smart wants it. And they're getting a lot of help against the press, so that one guy Freeman doesn't have to handle it by himself. Deep three. Again, that one runs off. Just not falling for BCU. Good outlet to Freeman. Mosley. My screen from Taylor uh, with Baycoat and Arlinch. Weber back in the game. He's got one steal so far. They have two as a team. Which is just, they average 10, as you mentioned earlier. Shot clocks at 14. And there's that moving, moving screen. screen. The shock is smart was asking for to be called in that first half. I have a feeling the officials chatted about that amongst themselves at halftime. Because, again, remember, shock is smart is not one of those coaches who's up complaining on every call. Right, right, right. So if he's that upset and you're an official, you have to think to yourself, well, maybe, maybe he's got a point. And clearly they talked about it at halftime. I, I remember when uh, Bobby Kremens was coaching at Georgia Tech, and ACC ref told me once, if Bobby Kremens complains about a call, you got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes you see coaches just ran a raid all day. Yeah. <laughs> Weber stuck. Oh, tough baseball pass shot. Good defense by Baco. An old division, good possession, good tough rebound there too. Baco's got 16, four of four from three-point range. Heck of an afternoon for him. Good matchup here, Weber and Baco. Now double. they double him. And, yep, a travel. I was looking for him to call the timeout, but I guess he slid his foot there. Another turnover. Baco did the right thing by going to the center of the court, but they surprised him with a trap. There. Usually they trap either on the press or in a corner, and they surprised him, and he dragged his foot. Right foot drag, not sure about the left, but regardless, turned over, free throws. The other way for VCU, to right. carve into this lead. Right, and the one thing is doing better is they are getting to the line. As we said, neither team went to the line in the first half. Now this is the third time in, in what, five, six possessions they've gotten. So Tillman, two free throws. This is deep into the bench was for Tillman to be in the game. You can tell Shaka Smart looking for some kind of spark. Problem is, you get a guy in who hasn't played many minutes, he hasn't been to the line very much either. Yeah, Tillman uh, has played in every game this year, but does not play that many minutes. About 11 a game. Only a freshman. Two. He's going to be a good player. I mean, Shaka Smart likes him a lot. But as you said, he's a freshman. And for the freshman at BCU, the hardest thing is to do what? Learn how to play defense. Because that's the key to playing time. Freeman gets it across. Weber's on him. Mosley. Now Taylor. 17 to shoot. You don't want to get in the habit of letting the shot clock run down to because under 10 creates a lot of pressure. That's a tough one. Not sure if they nope, did not get touched. You don't see that too often. No, I mean, the hand was in the face. I thought it was a deflection, but both yeah. officials said very definitively that it wasn't. Nobody arguing from ODU. I think for Mosey, that may be the first time that's ever happened to him. Good little chuckle. Me all the time. Yeah. 17 backyard. Graham Johnson. Couple dribbles. 
Just not having it today. 0 for 5 from the field. But Tillman with the putback. Giving them a little bit of offensive spark. Gets to the line and then gets a follow-up. And they get to set up their press, as we said. Here comes the trap. And they scoop it forward. Three on two. Mosley thinking about the three for the second. They'll slow it down. Wow, did Weber get back quickly? Looked like Mosley was going to have an open shot. And then Weber, like the flash or something, got right in front of him. VCU crowd here also trying to pick up the Rams. Pace down by 15. Shot clock's at 9. Mosley eyes the clock. Two-man old game. Watch out. Yep. There it is. That was a moving screen yeah. again. It was just it was too quick and he kind of crouched over to set that screen, John. Yep, absolutely. And again, the, clearly the officials are looking for it in this half after the after Shaka Smart's complaint. There was a bump. Yep. That was clear. That one wasn't hard to call at all. Jeff Jones is saying, but wait a minute, you didn't call that in the first half. <laughs> and you can't blame him for saying that. Because they didn't. Taylor got whistled and he takes a seat. 13 minutes left, second half. Critical juncture here, right now, the next two or three minutes. Yep. Ball's tapped away, but right to Burgess. Tillman, can he do it again? Nope. Baker with the board. Well, Tillman had given them a spark, no doubt, but I'm not sure they wanted him and Rudy the shooter out of the initial offense, and that is a foul. Powell got tripped. Possession for the Monarchs. We're going to see a lot more free throws in this half than the first, Frank, and it's already 6 6 on foul. I was having so much fun that first half. <laughs> no fouls. It all, it all evens out sometimes, right? Well, the game's changed in the second half, too. Mosley! That's a long time. Runs long. Hit a couple of those in the first half just like that. Williams the other way. It's way off. It's up from his release for Jeffrey. And you just said these are a couple important minutes here for VCU. Not a good shot there. They had two good opportunities there. Off of, off of turnovers and a, and a long missed shot and not able to convert. Here's it. Oh, oh, can he get there? Nope. Weber going to slide down. Good hustle by the guy who leads the nation and steals the game. That was on this one right there. How fast is he, though? Yeah. Did you ever see that movie, uh, My Super Ex Girlfriend? You know what? I've seen maybe a couple minutes and then I had to turn it off. Oh, it's terrible. But. <laughs> But Weber looks like like Una Th Uma Thurman in that movie when he goes down the court. He's so fast. Oh my God! Not as pretty. Who do we reference that flick? How about that? Palmer under pressure, stolen. Johnson Baker from behind, and he knocks it out of bounds into the off of Johnson's thigh. No, they say it will stay. VCU ball. Intensity picking up here. Old Dominion still in control. Up by 15, 41, 26. Smart for Coach Shaka Smart at VCU. Yeah, Shaka Smart deep into his bench with Tillman. He's made a couple good plays for him. And now he comes back. Graham back on the court, obviously, his leading scorer. And he still can't make a jump shot. That was certainly a foul. Right out of that timeout to try to get Johnson going. And he continues to be 0 for, 0 for 6 now the field. And again, as we said, both these coaches will come up with good stuff coming out of the timeouts. Good shot there. Ali Cox in position for the weak side rebound, and now we go one and one. A lot of time, a lot of time left. 11.51, so the rest of the way, at least one plus the bonus is at the double bonus of 10 fouls. Now the Cox to shoot one and one. Did not make him out of can't the free throw. You can't afford to just leave those points off the board at this point if you're at VCU. But you're right. He not one, one of their better free throw shooters. So big miss there. Could have chipped that lead at least down to 13. DCU, uh, ODU has to be careful not to work the clock here. Run your offense. Too much time left to not do that. Freeman, triple. Good tap out. And you can go into the backcourt on the tap out. Sure, because the ball was touched by the other team. Skips it to Mosley. Coming up on 11 to play. Got a whistle away. Foul on VCU. Johnson got a whistle. Inside. A lot, this 
So as we said right at the start, very physical game from the beginning. And early on, the officials were just letting him play through that stuff away from the ball. Now you get late, later in the game, and they start calling it more often. And as you said, these one and ones, the seventh, eighth, and ninth free fouls in half are often critical because you can leave a lot of points on the board if you don't make the front ends. VCU already missed one. So Ambrose Mosley, sophomore from Jacksonville, one and one. He's got nine points. Ambrose Mosley with a one and one. Redshirt sophomore, as we said, had to sit out his freshman year. Jeff Jones was really pleased with the way he came along last year. Not pleased with that free time. Yeah, it's it's one of the all-time wonders of basketball, the free throws. Continuing to struggle. Tough shot. But not a struggle there offensively for Graham. Graham can make circus shots. And he made one right there. But you're right about free throws. You know when free throw shooting started to deteriorate? There's another trap. You've got to get out of it. Freeman in trouble, and we're going back to shoot free throws. Bump, I think. Uh, either Lewis or Johnson. This time you got somebody on the free throw line who you would expect to make that front end of the one and one. Again, this game is slowed in its pace because of the fouls. We've got, what do we got, 16, 15 fouls so far here in, in the second half. In the first half, we had a total of nine. So Freeman, about a 90% free throw shooter. One plus one, and he gets the first. And you were saying when uh, free throws started to go Three south. Three-point shot. Yeah, Three yeah. Point. Because in the old days, when got shooters would come into the gym by themselves, they'd shoot free throws. Right. Now they come into the gym by themselves, they shoot threes. Mm -hmm. And it, free throw shooting's gone down nationally almost 10% since the advent of the three-point shot in 1986. If you think about it, it's a huge number. Oh, it makes such a difference. Graham off the feed for three. And he's it off. That's a tough one off for Old Dominion. Good call there. That's a shot you expect Graham to make. Stepping into the shot. Nice feed from Lewis there. It's good when your feeder becomes your screener. That's a really good play. And DCU just continues to struggle with their shooting. They're now two for 13 from three. And you, you use that great cliche, live by the three, die by the three. And DCU, they are dying. Tough jumper off the inbound. It wasn't a three, but it wasn't a particularly good shot. Larrier is a very good offensive player. Another freshman who Shaka Smart thinks is going to be an excellent player. But he's he's got to earn his minutes, too, because yeah. he has defensive issues, as most freshmen do. And, and there he fouls. Back Playing to with the his line. hands. Shaka Smart standing there going, that's what you can't play defense with your hands. He was joking that the hardest thing to do as a basketball coach is you spend two years recruiting a kid. You're the greatest. You're going to be the best player ever. I love you. And then you get to the first day of practice. And by the way, you don't know a thing about playing defense. Yeah. And that's, the, I mean, that's the dynamic that and free throws miss. So Baco had a chance to push that lead to 17. You're right. What kind of line drive that one? Players, they got to realize their coach is going to be on it from day one. Once they get him in, Johnson plus one. Nice move there. Finally gets off the schneid. First field goal made for him. And he'll go to the free throw line. And this game has become really choppy now in the last few minutes. Very and they played a VCU strength because it was such a well-played first half. Old Dominion was in their offense and reversing the ball and getting open threes. And now it's just very choppy. The bad news, though, if you're VCU, is that Old Dominion now shoots two free throws the rest of the game with 10 8 left. Jordan Burgess back into the game. So Burgess will check in for Graham. Shaka Smart will keep Along running people at you because as we discussed earlier, those steals you don't get in the first half, they can lead to steals in the second half because you just keep coming yeah. at them in waves and you wear them down physically and mentally. Chance for a three-point play here for Johnson. Knocks it in. Go full court lead is down to 12. Plenty of time left in this one. And leaving it to other guys to get the ball inbounds, and now Weber is trying to blanket Freeman. Ooh, look out! Oh. That's back to the free throw line. Another foul. Burgess can't believe it. He said, "Hey, I was going for the ball, but he banged into big coat." So free throws coming up 
Well, he was him. going for the ball. There was no dirtiness yeah. in the play. But that's a matter of position. And Baycoat was closer to the basketball. And now they shoot two the rest of the game. Came in as a 90% free throw shooter, but missed the last one and one that he shot. Oh, the only confusion about the sub was that Burgess has to wait for the first right. free throw before he comes out. Aaron Baker with two shots. Burgess has four, so he's going to have to take a seat, obviously. Yep. Makes the first. Better shooting motion there than the first half. First half looked like a short on him. Also, that mental dynamic, too, if you know you got two. The first one isn't as uh, There's no pressure. question. You know, they yeah. changed that rule back in 1991 to go from uh, one right. and one That's all the right. way to two from the 10th on to try to cut down on fouls. It's a nice idea. It hasn't worked. Right, right. Yeah, his teams would start fouling five, six minutes. <laughs> I mean, NC State would not well, have won the national championship in 1983 if the current rules No. 45-31, under 10 to play, second half. Upset in the making here, number 14, VCU in trouble, and we got a traveling violation on Allie Cox. Yeah, that was good defense there. Arledge got in the passing lane, and Allie Cox couldn't catch it clean, and that's why he walked. Well, the, the history of the free throw, as you see the travel here it's amazing because way back in the days you could either shoot one free throw at possession remember that yeah and that was the international rule for years and i always thought that was a good rule so that if teams fouled you at the end of the game and then what i think they ought to do uh -huh. is they ought to get to a point where at let's say at the 15th foul you get two points in the ball so you're right because so you just fouled too he, much he, and you can't foul there's another one free throws coming up now every possession yeah. has been a foul for the last three or four minutes And the good news is VCU is deep enough that they can afford fouls, but not for Burgess and not for Weber, who just committed his third. Those two guys, the three guys they've got to have on the court, four guys, Burgess, Johnson, Weber, Grant. Those guys have to be available in the end game for Shaka Smart. And Freeman, as you said, 90% now is missed two. One more coming. ODU really has had a chance here in the last few minutes to build this lead to almost uncatchable, but they haven't taken advantage. They missed four free throws, six of ten here in the second half. They had zero in the first half. So it gets back to what we were talking about with the three-point shot. They were so good from three. Crab dribbling left hand. Johnson plus one. Boy, oh boy, that is just a... Gifted maneuver offensively. A big time move. Goes left and comes back right across the lane. Gets fat, hacked across the hand face as he shoots with the left hand and wow. it goes in. That's well, why he's averaging 70 points often. a game. Yeah. In midstream, changing hands. To his off hand. Three point play. He's back down to 12. Full court from BCU. Freeman will try to break it. Weber's all over him. Got the step through. Mosley, the step in jumper. In and out. Allie Cox goes up high over the offensive rebound. Outlet Johnson. Always going to pull from 28 feet. Yeah, he got a little overexcited there. They didn't need that shot. And another blocking foul. Now it's almost like the exact same spot. And, and they are calling all contact at this point. You, you see, these are very good officials. These are three experienced officials. But the thing you've got to remember as an official is you don't stop the game unless an advantage is gained. Agreed. That was nothing there. And, and he didn't lose his dribble there. Yeah. And, I, you know, I've been to these, these officiating, uh, preseason officiating symposiums, and that's what they say. Right. Don't stop the game unless it's an advantage is gained. Freeman makes the first. And gets him with the double figures, 10 points. Lewis back in there for Williams taking a seat. When was the last time we went back to back possession? Uh, I foul? don't remember. Yeah, it's been a while. Makes it both as Freeman 11. We'll take a, we'll take a quick breather. No, it's okay. Part of it is because 
the Freeman coming out. I'm sorry. I'm, I'll let you say that eventually. No, no, it's fine. My wife always says, are you going <laughs> to shut up and let me finish a sentence? <laughs> and I go, no. 48-34. You just get that feeling DC's got a big run in them at some point. Good defense. Graham laying is good. Good hands at first, but better by Graham to regroup and get it back and score. Got a little bit lucky because Taylor got his hands on the ball, and then the ball came right back to him, and he alertly put it back in while Taylor was recovering. They get it over. Palmore will take the point guard spot as Freeman gets a brief rest. Guarded by Lewis. This is a veteran coach getting his guy out just before he knows the TV timeout's coming up. So he gets a little extra rest. Bayco been quiet in the second half. And we got a jump ball. Possession will go over to VCU. The defense reached his hand in there and got the turnover because he got his hand squarely on the ball. And Chuck Jones was right on it and made the call. What I was saying about the fouling is yeah. it, it, part of it is because VCU has to be aggressive on every possession on defense. Even if they break the trap, they still have to attack. But the other part of it is they're calling it a lot tighter than they did in the first half. Graham, good defense by Arlitz to recover. Lewis, and there is a bump. You see, again, I didn't. where's the advantage yeah. game there? We got, a, we got a timeout here. Under eight to play. Hold the minute up by 12, 48 36. Yeah, they missed a couple shots, as you mentioned, missed some free throws. And now it's going to be a matter of can VCU wear Old Dominion down these last few minutes and cause some turnovers and get some easy baskets? And on the other end, ODU's going to the foul line the rest of the game. Can they make their free throws? VCU cannot make their first one. Lewis misses. That's key. Now 6 of 10 as a team of the Rams. They had a chance to get it down to 10. They missed them both. Yeah, that, and again, that's just leaving points off the board at a stage of the game when you can't afford you. Now, both teams have done it. Neither team exactly lighting it up in the free throw line. Almost stolen from behind by Lewis. Knocked out of bounds. Again, it's just the, the flow that this game had in the first half, particularly at ODU's game, has just stopped completely. Palmore did bound up top to Arledge. 24 to shoot. Almost stole. Look at that. And, all, and he almost lost it to Lewis. Great hustle by Freeman, but then he throws it away. Three on one. Two, that is Graham. Blocked by Palmore off of VCU. Possession goes over to Old Dominion. And that's a break for Old Dominion because it looked like they were going to get a layup. And notice Arledge coming out of the game right now. Jeff Jones not happy with him handling the ball 25 feet from the basket because that led to the steal that looked like it was going to lead to a layup, but Palmore makes a great defensive play in there, and ODU gets the ball back. Pressure Lewis to get on the deck. Can't get that. Lewis is almost as quick with his hands as Weber. Seven and a half to play. Freeman in trouble. Now Palmore with it. Shot clock's at 18. Freeman and Palmore together are a good combination in terms of handling the basketball. Freeman got the step of the lead. He got him on his left hip. And as we said, even though he can go to his left, he's stronger with his right. And there was no help, and it led to a layup. 13 points for Freeman. And is that plus one? No, he's got free throws anyway. He'll shoot two. Lead is at 14 right now. 6.56 left. If you're Jeff Jones, and we told him before the game, you can hold VCU to 36 points with under seven to play, he'd say you're crazy. He'd say you're crazy, yeah. and, and he'd say, John, I've said for years you know nothing about basketball, and it's proven. But they play great defense. Now, the thing they really need to do is they need to stop fouling. Make yes. VCU earn their points. Don't give them, don't not only give them free, free shots at the line, but you stop the clock. Yeah, absolutely. You want the clock running on, even when on a made basket, the clock keeps running until the last minute. Williams in there for BCU, trying to add some pressure here. Give the weather a couple of minutes. Give it a rest. Grab another free throw. Weber won't be over there for long, I promise you that. Another missed one. He's stuck at 15 for the afternoon to leave BCU to score. Lead has seemed to be at the same spot 
this entire second half, right around 13, 15 points. Not been able to break that psychological barrier of getting it in single digits. Charlich, Freeman got the step. Good defense, staying his ground was Williams, and that's a bad foul. As we're going to go 94 feet the other way, free throws for Alec Cox. Yeah, Freeman was on the ground there, and he didn't intend to create a foul, but he did. See, there's an advantage game there. He leans in a la Jeff Lamb. Jeff wow, Jones' Jeff old Lamb teammate. <laughs> Nobody leaned in better to create a foul than, than, than Jeff Lamb. I, he was so good at it. You know what? You'd appreciate this. I was watching St. John's versus Gonzaga yesterday. Did yeah. you see the play for St. John's who was wearing the short shorts? Yeah, I did. I like that. Jeff Lamb had some short shorts. Oh, yeah, yeah but everybody had him back then. <laughs> Knox, about a 70% free throw shooter. This one earlier makes that one. Jeff Jones played in short shorts. And, and trust me, he was a tremendous player. Came out of Owensboro, Kentucky. Came down to Virginia or North Carolina. Dean Smith has always said one of his biggest recruiting disappointments was when Jeff Jones decided to go to Virginia. And Jeff still has the letter that Dean wrote him, wishing him the best of luck after he chose after. Virginia. Another missed free throw by BCU. Leads at 12. We're at 618 left fourth quarter. They go three minutes. Going right, college, and he knocked nope. down a big three. He made it in! <laughs> I take it all back. When it's Jonathan. going your way. <laughs> it is going your way. It leads up to 15. Wow, another triple the other way. That's way off way by off. DCU. Alec Cox puts it in. Brooks tried it from right next to Shaka Smart. Not sure that's what Shaka Smart wants. The guy's fresh off the bench. Taking a shot on his first touch. It was like the uh, Derek Wittenberg, Lorenzo Charles shot. You know, it was all set up that way. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. Uh oh, Alex lost it. Ross regains it. Plenty of time to shoot. 15. Smart play by Freeman, backing it off, recognizing plenty of time on the clock. Jump stop off the window. No good. Johnson will push it if they want to. Three on three. Somebody slipped. Layup's no good. Put back, no good. Graham went up high, but couldn't get it to fall down. Well, Baycoat fell down there, which is why there was no foul. That is a foul. And another and blocking foul on Virginia Commonwealth. See if they take a look at this as a flagrant on the road. See what we see on the replay here. Yeah, no, it two. wasn't. It was, it was almost incidental contact between the two, but you got to call it on the defender there. 30 second timeout called. Old Dominion up by 13, 53 40. I know Grandma's house isn't the most exciting, but it's only for a few hours. Look, you hasn't been able to make a run to put the game away, and VCU hasn't been able to make a run to make the game tense. And if it gets under 10, then everybody starts to get a little tighter in a game like that. Especially when it's been in double digits for so long. Good look at Jeff Jones. Second year. A great season last year, 18 and 18. Yeah. After where they'd been two years ago. And, of course, Jeff took America into their first and second NCAA tournament bids in 08 and 09. As emotional a building as I've ever been in, in 08, when they beat Colgate to get to their first NCAA tournament ever. Lead is back up to 15. Weber. Hesitation now finding Graham Ball fakes. Got Ross in the air. Weber's not even looking to shoot. Now he does. Tough floater, short on it, and it's off of uh, Weber. Goes over to Old Dominion. One of the first times Weber has taken a shot out of their offense all day. I mean, he's we talk about his defense. And Old Dominion has done an excellent job on him defensively. Just two Comes points. Trap. One for four. Speaking of two, three is in trouble, and we got to get him out quickly by Jeff Jones. Well, and that's where the rule, you know, years ago, coaches couldn't call a timeout. So oh, they, that's right. Yep. And he saw what was going on and called a timeout. 30 seconds. Old Dominion timeout. 4.41 left here in the uh, second half. Old Dominion up by four. Who needed it and then had his whole team over to the house for Thanksgiving dinner. But his wife did not have to cook. <laughs> One of their sponsors provided That's a lot the food. of food. Thank goodness. Four and a half left. Old Dominion 
The largest lead was 18. Right now it's at 15. Under pressure again, Freeman. And we got a foul. That would look like a little bit oh, of a bailout. That was fortunate. Shaka Smart agrees that that looked like a little bit of a bailout. He might have thought it was a lot of bit of a bailout. And that's the one thing, too, when you're officiating and a guy gets double teamed, you almost have really penalized the defensive side for getting into that spot in the first place. If in fact, yeah, exactly. I mean, and that was that looked like a good trap. I don't know if there was a reach in or not somewhere that Les Jones saw, but it looked to me like that was a really good trap. Freeman back to the line, six of eight so far. Let's take another look. There we go. Here comes the trap. Let's see. Ball. Yeah, there's contact there. I see what he saw. There was he was on the ball first, and then there was contact body to body. Les Jones has worked five ACC tournament championship games, so I think he knows what he's doing. Right now, Still a tough call if you're a coach. Oh, yeah, of you, course. You, you see the trap, you think yeah, you got him, and then he's at the 90% free throw shooters at the line. Lights them both. And the lead is up to 17 with 420 left. He just hasn't been able to get it going. Oh, he squibbed it in. God, that's a shooter's roll. That was fortunate for Graham. It almost felt like that was a dead rim the way the ball rolled in there, didn't it? Oh, it hit the back and just flat. Yeah. So we overshot it. Freeman, Marlich. Graham's been practicing that. Now you want to work a little clock. You're under four minutes. No, that, again, that's not, that what you want. not what Jeff Jones wanted. And then a foul underneath. 94 feet, and they'll shoot free throws. 351 left. Can Old Dominion hold on? Right now, they've got a comfortable 14 point lead over VCU. Free throw line with a chance to cut it to 12. Yeah, bad foul right before the uh, under four timeout. After a miss by Old Dominion, they foul underneath on the rebound. And Graham makes the play, makes the first down to 13. Harlan's got an earful. He also got a seat on the bench. Uh, there was still about 18 seconds on the shot clock. He forces a terrible shot, and that leads to the foul. As, as you said, stops the clock and then go 94 feet. Graham makes them both. At 20. Yep. 20 points lead. All scores. Almost stolen by Lewis. They got to get it over. And they just do to break the 10 second. Backboard violation. Now more in trouble. They want to use a timeout here, and it's off of yep, Old turn Dominion. Over. Turned it over. And Jeff Jones is upset because they have they, their guys have to know to come and help. They've been doing it well all day long. And they need to know when to come and help. And Freeman just went to the locker room for a second uh, and hobbled back a little bit. Obviously, they need him in here in the end game. Johnson. Three is no good. It goes off of Old Dominion. I didn't mean I meant Burgess. He was the one that just came in. And now he comes back. He's coming back in. Yeah, he's got limping a noticeably. Very definitive limp there. And, uh, I'm sure Jeff Jones is like, even with a limp, he's, he's what we need to have in there. Yeah. Late going. Freeman is their best ball handler and their best free throw shooter. So on one and a half legs, they still have him in there. Weber. Graham, another triple. Got it! And all here, here comes the yep. run. They've got yep. it in single digits. Down to nine with plenty of time here. 317 left. With 17 under a minute to go. In the lead. Nine points. Plenty of time left here. And let's see how well Freeman is moving as he comes to try to get the ball. Yeah, he's hobbled out absolutely. Where bank code is critical. Layup. Nice move. Both Very feet. smart play. Broke the press in an easy layup. And, and VCU was not looking for him to attack the basket. He had a, a, right. had, had no but no help there. They were thinking they're going to pull it out, trying to eat some clock. Brown coming to life again. Leads at 11. Yeah, and we talked about how well coached these teams are. That was a sign of it. Johnson wheeling and dealing and scores. And a great. High screen there by Ali Cox, and he was not moving on that screen. That was a perfect screen. Ten points for Johnson. Well, under his average, two and a half to play. BCU 
Doesn't want to foul here. Two free throws will come the other way for Old Dominion. And Baycoat doing a great job the last couple of possessions breaking the press. Lewis on Freeman. Allowing Freeman not to have to put that much pressure on that foot that looks to be hurt. Mostly 14 to shoot off to Baycoat. Eyes the clock. 10. The shot clock going one on one with Weber with those quick feet. Stays in front of him. He's in trouble with three on the shot clock from 25. Oh, what a rebound, Arledge. Get rid of it, though. Hard play. And he tiptoes and keeps it alive. Crowds on their feet here. We've been on Arledge a couple times for not being heads up, but that was heads up. A great rebound and the wherewithal to not put it back up. Mosley, Freeman to bring down the house on this one. Oh. And Lewis lost his shoe and somehow was able to put it back on. Down by nine. That may be the most athletic move we've seen all day. Another three grab and circles it in. And the lead's down to six with 90 seconds left. And another timeout from BCU. As Travion Graham is putting BCU on his back now with 26. And he's showing us why. New Lewis will be on the ball here. 55. Man to man look. See if they trap here. Lewis looking like he might want to trap. Freeman. Faked it. Gets it now over. he comes. There he comes. He's into duress. Gets it off to Ross and they'll reset. Shot clock at 23. Baco doesn't have to shoot it. He does. He scores it. It's a good shot because it went in, Frank. <laughs> Lewis quickly the other way. Leads to eight. Graham, can he do it again? Grab dribbling in. Weber doesn't even look to shoot. Lewis now. And they whistle a foul on a bump. Two free throws coming up for Lewis. I thought that was a good call because he was trying to get up in the air and he got hit and he got knocked off stride a little bit. Lewis and checking his eye there. Maybe his contact issues or something. Maybe got poked. Holding his left eye. As I said, he had a bad concussion in the, in the opener at Navy. And uh, very fortunate that he's been able to come back and play this quickly. And now they're going to go over and have the trainer take a look at it. I think your, your instinct was 105 left, eight point lead here. Could go to six if Lewis makes both. Yeah, these are big free throws for him. They coat now with 24. Last two baskets, both very aggressive plays. That last one, if it does, it's one of those where the coach goes, oh no, right. nice shot. <laughs> Because there was still about 18 seconds on the shot. About 80% free throw shooter is Lewis. Big free throws. Leads back down to six. Now the X's and O's. You, you, you play defense? You extend the game? Still a lot of time? What do you do here? I think, by six. I think you play defense because it, it's two possessions if you okay. if you shoot three. Freeman finds Ross open. And then they now foul. foul. Arledge. Well, the strategy was half. And half. If you could get a steal in the backcourt, you get it. Yep. If not, you foul right away when it comes across midcourt and put Arledge on the line. And great scouting because Arledge is a 38% free throw shooter. And trust me, Shaka Smart, one of the assistant coaches, has right there on the clipboard who the free throw shooters are for the other team, what their percentages are, so you know who you want to foul in this situation. Got a good look at Strobe, too. I'm not sure why he struggles. Makes the first. Lefties are always good for each other. We all are. Are you, are you saying you're left handed? I'm, I'm left handed uh -huh. in every possible way. But interesting, he's not dribbling the ball. I'll bet you that's a new move that Jeff Jones has worked with him on to improve his free throw shoot. They do take him out, though. Maybe they're worried about hacking Arledge because he's going to sit down with under a minute to play. Lead is at eight. 63-55. Those were two big free throws there, though. Chan of ODU, Echoing. Lewis with the left hand, missed it. Ali Cox went over the back. Not Ali Cox, yeah. Yep, they whistled it on DCU. Uh, Ross had position there. Ali Cox trying to reach over him for that desperately needed rebound. Can't really blame Ali Cox there. Looked like a good move by Lewis. And Ross had had position. So free throws for the Monarchs. VCU's won the last four games in this series. The last time ODU beat VCU, interestingly, was in the CAA final in 2011. 
and both teams went to the NCAA Talk tournament that, that right. year, Absolutely. and they both lost to Butler. Old Dominion lost in the round of 64. Great game in Verizon Center. On a sure. tip in at the buzzer. Remember that. Yep. That was a terrific basketball game. That was a very good ODU Jordan team. Of course, Butler ended up going to the Final Four where they played who? BCU. That's right. Well, Ross misses the first. Another key one here. One of two. It was a bonus getting one of two from him. Got to push it go. Graham with 26. That's for 28. Yes. He got it, but I think they needed to shoot a three there. Yeah. Because you still got a three possession game here. A foul right away off of Ross's knee, maybe, but they whistle a foul before on Cox with the push. Well, I thought that was a good call. I thought, and, and that that was good good positional refereeing by Chuck Jones because he had a perfect view of it as, as the lead ref, as opposed to Brian Kersey, who was there in the corner and was screened by a player. So, two free throws for Old Dominion with 41 and a half left. Ross goes back to the line, one or two in his uh, previous trip. Again, not a great free throw shooter, Ross. But as you said earlier, when you got two, it makes it a little bit easier than one and one. And we've been in the two shot situation at both ends of the floor for about an hour now. Yeah. <laughs> Brown loves that first free throw from the 33% free throw shooter. He's made two out of three. Leads at eight. Second one. That's good. Lead is at nine. Now you got to think threes. You got to think quick. Johnson, quiet afternoon. Step, Step back. back. Short. Alley Cox wisely kicks it out to Weber for a three. That runs long. Johnson with the board. And he got fouled. Uh, he, he just needed to get something up at that point. They tried two threes. Neither one went in. They've had a terrible shooting day from outside other than Graham's little string here at the end. So he gets the ball up on the board, gets fouled, stops the clock, which Jeff Jones will get a little grayer. See the struggles for Johnson today. Two of ten from the field. Does make the first free throw. He made both those field goals almost back to back. Remember he made that lefty shot in the lane and then drove the ball from the right side a couple possessions later. Other than that, as you said, he's been ice cold. And he's a good shooter field goal wise. He's a good shooter. Good offensive player. He's averaging 17 points a game. Again, part of the credit has to go to Old Dominion for the defense. This is the second one. Is I think DCU is waving the flag here. No, Shocker wanted to know why they didn't foul. Yeah, they didn't foul in the back court. He had, he's pointing, saying, "What, no. fellas? What were you doing?" Yeah. And the crowd can sense it here at the Ted upset in the making here. Monarchs with 20.9 up by eight. Again, this is one of those losses. If it turns out to be a loss for the BCU, that Shaka Smart's going to use to work on his team. But the schedule, as we said, is just brutal for the next couple of weeks. They're yeah. playing all teams that are going to, be, at the very least, be in serious contention for the NCAA tournament, not to mention Virginia, which is in the top 10. 24 for Baycoat. And I can read lips pretty well. He's yelling at the crowd, I'm back. I'm yeah. back. Yeah, well, he's been talking to the crowd most of the day. <laughs> he doesn't need to do a post-game interview. He's no, already, already did it, right? The game. Right. We were joined by him during the game. Yeah, exactly. And if he makes this almost mathematically impossible for VCU to make a run and do anything there. Four possessions, even with the three. Weber going to bring it down off to Johnson. And he got fouled. Well, that wasn't smart. Big big what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, are you doing? Game's over. Don't foul. That is the A1 thing coaches say late going. Don't foul. It's the last thing they say coming out of a huddle. You know, and late in the game, what a coach will do is he will set, he will say, all right, the fouls are this, it's our arrow or their arrow, and if you have the lead, don't foul. This the free throw. Now they'll foul with 13.9. That's actually a big miss because the yeah. lead could have gone to six. Again, let's give a lot of credit to Trey Freeman because he's clearly hurt. 
He's limping yeah, he's every hobbling. time he tries to run. And he's, he, barely, he came out quite briefly, went to the locker room, and came right back. He's limping even when he's walking. Pull everybody back. Baycoats free throws. He'll add to his season high. Has to be close to a career high. For 27. He's got 26 now. He, he really got this team going. I mean, all credit to Freeman for the way he dealt with the trap. But Baycoat helped him, and he was the one who was making the threes that really got them on the roll in that first half. And Ross's defense. Graham, another three by goodness. They never miss late in the game. No, of course three. not. It, because there's no pressure. It's like, okay, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, a, it's going to take a miracle. And they're not thinking. They just fired. We talked at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Get turnovers, convert off turnovers. But they didn't convert enough off of those turnovers. Yeah, a lot of points, obviously, because the free throws here in the second half. Because ODU's hit 70, well above their average. Well, we said if they got to 70, they'd probably win the game, didn't yep. they, before the game. So 8.3, unless Old Dominion literally hands the ball to VCU. They're going to wrap this thing up. Just got to make a free throw after the foul. And only 12 turnovers in the game for, for ODU. Now they get it in. And that should be it. Yep. With 6.3, they go back to the line. Still trying to get to 30 on the uh, afternoon. The theory, when you foul here, because you say 6.3, why are you fouling? Well, the theory is that if by some chance Baycoat misses two and you can hit a three right away and steal the inbounds, you still have a, a, a one in a hundred chance. Once he makes one free throw here, that, that's the ball game. Good ball game. I mean, we had some choppiness in the middle, but good game, great atmosphere. Played very hard, very intense, but very clean. For Old Dominion, if this holds up, first win over ranked opponents since 2010 for Jeff Jones and company. Well, and those, were, those were good teams back in 2010 and 2011 under Blaine Taylor. 30 for Baycoat. Graham will just try to add to the stat sheet. Another three. 34 for him. Leads down to five and a foul with one-tenth of a second. I think I would have swallowed my whistle there. Yeah, just let it go. Five-point lead, and that'll do it. As for Old Dominion, though, in terms of a confidence booster, defending home court over a top 15 team. Yeah, and against a rival, he was, we mentioned, 90th time these teams have played. I'm glad they're still playing. And they came out. Really, you know, the shooting was important, but what won them this game were two things. Their half-court defense, which was good throughout, and the way they handled the press. They clearly did a great job in practice the last couple of days getting ready for this pressure. And on the other hand, Shaka Smart will look at it and say, we didn't shoot the ball well, we didn't convert off of turnovers, and give ODU credit for the way they handled the pressure. And that'll do it. Big home victory for Old Dominion, upsetting number 15 VCU, 73-67. We'll come back and wrap things up.